Celtic's classy midfielder Matt O'Reilly could have been lining up for Denmark against Tunisia in the World Cup in Qatar this afternoon. And Carl Starfelt has revealed most of the Celtic players have been on the receiving end of a verbal volley from Angie Postacoglu. After the Sydney Super Cup, Celtic coach Angie Postacoglu said his side was likely to take friendlies to other countries before returning to Australia again. London-born O'Reilly, who celebrated his 22nd birthday yesterday, has already picked up caps at Danish under-21 level during his breathtaking surge up the ranks, but he just failed to get the nod to join Kasper Juhlmann's squad for the soccer showpiece. Denmark, birthplace of the player's mother, will also face world champions France and Aaron Moyes Australia in their intriguing Group D of the global sporting extravaganza. O'Reilly admitted, I was really disappointed. I spoke with the manager and I think I was close. I think it was just a tiny bit soon for me by the sound of it. He was saying that the lead-up to this World Cup was quite a strange one. He fact I got so close in a relatively short period of time is a definite positive. I know it will sound weird, but this rest will do me good, too. I should be able to come back in a really good place. I've been lucky enough to stay fit so far for the season. I've played a lot football. Just coming back fresh, I think that will help me kick on again. O'Reilly also insisted some of his Hoops teammates were unlucky not to be showing their qualities on international football's highest stage. As well as Moy, Josip Juranovic will be representing Croatia, Dizen Maeda will be among the attackers for Japan while centre-back Cameron Kartavikas was an unused substitute for the USA in their 1-1 draw with Wales last night. But O'Reilly was surprised Kyogo Furuhashi and Rio Hat 8 were overlooked by the Japanese and Felipe Jota didn't get the chance to deliver for Portugal. The ball-playing middle-of-the-park operator added, I felt for both Rio and Kyogo. Selfishly, it's probably a good thing for us. They are going to come back fresh for the league, they are not going to get injured or anything. We were a bit confused that they didn't make it. I think a few boys were unlucky. Even Jota, I think he had a fair shout of going with Portugal. It's a good thing we were all close. It shows we are in a good position and, hopefully, next year we can all be involved with our national teams. No one is safe in the dressing room or on the training field if the boss believes he has witnessed anyone slacking or dropping off the pace, as Starfelt reveals ANGE motivation. Central defender Starfelt was one of the Greek-Australians' first buys for the hoops at £4.2 million from Ruben Kazan a month after kicking off the Angie revolution at Parkhead. Asked if he had been aware of the eye-opening fly-on-the-wall documentary, the Swedish international answered, Have I seen it? Yes. He is a really good manager and he knows what he wants. If someone falls out of it he will push them back into it. I think most of the boys have experienced the temper at some point. The manager sets high standards and I think that's how it should be. Every player pushing for Celtic and more should have high standards. If you throw players excuses then they will have them. You have to go out there and perform no matter the circumstances. Is the league done and dusted? No, absolutely not. There is a long season ahead and we are not even close to the halfway point. We always take it game by game, like we did last season. I think we also have very high standards. The manager is always pushing us to never relax. You can see it in training every day. I am not worried about complacency. Postacoglu and his Parkhead players, with the team winning 10 titles in the last 11 years, get back on the trail of another championship when the league restarts with a game against Aberdeen at Petodri on Saturday afternoon December 17th. Postacoglu said he was not one for sentimentality, but that it had been special to witness the Australian fans' reaction to Celtic's first visit since 2011. It's been good to be back home, he told reporters. You walk the streets of Sydney and there are Celtic shirts everywhere. It's brilliant to see. We know the enormity of the football club, but the distance, from Scotland, doesn't diminish the passion of the supporters. 
While European clubs will visit Australia for the Sydney Super Cup in 2025 and 2027, Celtic looks set to prioritise other international friendlies rather than return to Australia in the short term. We've got to share the love around and go to other areas first, Postacoglu said. The club realises that its reach is global. Every part of the globe, we've got supporters. Everton manager Frank Lampard praised the Australian fans of his side, who sit just above the Premier League's relegation zone after 15 games. We appreciate it very much that we're supported on the other side of the world, that people watch us in the middle of the night, he said. It's a small world these days so it's nice that we can travel here and be here. So that mob sacked the manager. Oh what a shame, it's always dark in our shadow.